today I've put together a compilation of some of my favourite science experiment videos which I've made over the years. If you enjoy this video, you can make sure you don't miss any of my future content by subscribing to my channel, clicking the notification bell and selecting all. Here's a great one to start. How do you make a Coca-Cola drink transparent? Well, use bleach. Watch what happens when I top up the glass. You can see the colour being stripped out of the Coke. Give it a mix and leave it to sit for a few minutes, and it turns completely transparent. Crazy, huh? Of course, make sure you don't drink it and dispose of it carefully. For the next one, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple homopolar electric motor. It's really easy to make. All you need is an AA battery, circular magnets, and some copper wire. So to make the motor, we attach the magnets to the base of the battery, then take a short length of the copper wire, fold it in half, then fold it back on itself like this. Next, we need to measure it alongside of the battery and fold the wire over at the same length as the magnets. Then form a loop at each end so it looks like this. This loop will hug the magnets at the base. Slide it over the battery and balance it on top. And off it goes. Look at it spin. We've made our motor. You do need to make sure the copper is well balanced so it doesn't fall off. So, the battery causes current in the wire, which interacts with the magnetic field from the magnets, and that's what causes the wire to spin. You can make them out of different sized batteries. Here I'm using a slightly larger battery. And here's one with a tiny button battery. Or try experimenting by making different shapes of wire. I really like this spiral design. And this counterbalance one too. Just remember, it does need to balance. For the next one, I'm going to show you a really cool trick you can do with dry wipe marker pens. Start by taking a plate and use one of the pens to draw something on. I'm drawing a stick man. Now look what happens when I hold the plate under a tap and slowly dribble water alongside of the stick man. He starts to lift off the plate, then breaks free and floats on the water. Let's see it from another angle. You can see he's still partially attached to the plate, then with a bit of a wobble and a shake, he breaks free and floats on the water. You can draw a whole host of things on the same plate and even use different colours on the same design. Add water, then slowly give the plate a wobble and watch as they break free. You can see the snail is free, there goes the butterfly, then the bat breaks free, and the beetle, and finally the ladybird. You can carefully move them around with your finger. Or what's really cool is taking a drinking straw and blowing them around with that. For the next one, I'm going to show you how to burn a candle under water. My candle measures about 22 millimetres in diameter, and I've cut it so it's roughly the same length as the depth of this bowl. I started by lighting the candle, dripping a good puddle of wax into the bottom of the bowl, then I extinguished it, and stuck it down into the molten wax. Let it dry for a few minutes so the candle is stuck firmly into the bowl. Then fill up the bowl with water until it's just underneath the bottom of the candle. Let the water settle, then go ahead and light it. I'm speeding up the video now so you can see what happens. As the wax burns, the water keeps the outside of the candle cold so it doesn't melt. And the flame actually drops below the surface of the water. Eventually though, it does melt through and the candle will flood. But I used a piece of wire to measure how far the candle had burnt down beneath the surface of the water. Mine went down about 18 millimetres. In this experiment, we're going to learn about density. Start by taking an empty glass, then tip in some water and food colouring. Then add some syrup or treacle. I added a little more water to make the layer a bit thicker. Then finally, fill up the glass with some oil and leave it to settle for about 15 minutes. 
These liquids separate out into different layers because they're different densities and they don't mix. The syrup has the highest density so it sits on the bottom. The water sits on top of that and the oil which has the lowest density sits on the top. Now we're going to try dropping different objects in to see what happens. If we drop this metal nut in which is really dense it sinks straight down to the bottom. But if I take this grape and drop it in, it sinks through the oil and water but sits on top of the syrup. This is because the syrup is denser than the grape. Now if I take a plastic bottle top and drop it in, it slowly sinks through the oil and sits on the water. And finally if I take this piece of sponge and drop it in, it sits on top. The oil is denser than the sponge. You can try dropping different objects in to see which fluid is denser. For this one I'm going to show you a really cool experiment with water and ground black pepper. Start by taking a plate and pour on some water. Then take your pepper and sprinkle a fine layer all over the water nice and evenly like this. You can see the pepper sits on the surface of the water and if you dip your finger in nothing much happens. You might get some pepper stuck on your fingertip but that's about it. Next take some washing up liquid and wipe a tiny bit on the end of your finger. Then try dipping it in the water again. This time as you can see the pepper seems to magically shoot away from your finger. So here's what's happening. The pepper sits on the water because of the high water surface tension. The water molecules are strongly attracted together. When we add a little soap we break down this surface tension and the top layer of water molecules very quickly spread out and carry the pepper with them. And if you use less pepper they're able to spread out even further. And we can actually repeat this experiment with the dry wipe marker animals that we created earlier. I'm just adding a drop of washing up liquid into the middle and watch as they shoot to the side. For the next one I wanted to see what happens if we froze slime. So I made up some slime out of PVA glue, added a bit of water and food colouring and some Stayflow liquid starch. I mixed it together into this really cool slime. It's really stringy and great fun to play with. But I decided to put it into moulds to see what happens if I freeze it. So I filled up this Lego style figure mould and also these bugs then popped them into the freezer. I left them overnight to freeze then took them out. They froze really well. They come out of the moulds easily and the level of detail is really good. I decided to try hitting one with a hammer to see if it would shatter. At first it just chipped a bit off and slid from under the hammer. So I tried again with a bigger hammer. And it fractured clean in half. As it warms up it starts to thaw out and you can mould it again with your hands. It returns back to ordinary slime. This figure also came out really well. But I decided just to warm it up with a blowtorch to melt it back down and convert it back to slime. But for the next one I'm making this really amazing magnetic slime. I started by making a base slime the same way as before. You could of course add food colouring if you want to make it a colour. Then to make it magnetic I'm adding iron filings. I poured some onto the slime and worked it into the mixture and when it's ready you should have a light grey slime. Now take a magnet and hold it close by to see how it reacts. The slime is attracted to the magnet and you can make it move. You've got to be quick or it'll stick to the magnet. These neodymium magnets are really powerful. Watch what happens when they get stuck into the slime. It kind of just swallows them up. Pretty cool huh? I have speeded up some of the footage so it's quicker to watch. You can stack up magnets to make them stronger. And watch what happens. The slime sort of jumps and wraps itself around. It's great fun to play with and watch it all move. But if you try and keep it to use again at a later date you'll probably find the iron filings have gone rusty so I wouldn't try and store it. For the next one we're going to turn this chicken egg into a really cool squidgy translucent egg. Which even bounces. To make it place it into a drinking glass and cover it with clear vinegar. Straight away small bubbles start to appear around the entire egg. 
What's happening is the acid in the vinegar starts to react with the calcium carbonate eggshell and slowly dissolves it. The chemical reaction produces these carbon dioxide bubbles. After about six hours, the shell had started to become soft and the top layer had started to dissolve. It's also really slippery. After 24 hours, the shell had completely dissolved and the egg was held together by a very thin membrane which was underneath the shell. If you look carefully, you can see the yolk inside. It is slightly squidgy and it's very delicate, but it is just strong enough to bounce. I held it over a plate to see just how high it could bounce from. Splat! That was about 30 centimetres. But here you can see the membrane which was holding it together. If you've enjoyed this video, you can give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified when I release new content. Stay safe, have fun, and as always, thanks for watching.